Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. It's been said that if you find yourself bored, then you're probably boring. Though in some parts of Nebraska, it's easy to see why the wagons went west. Believe it or don't, I had never stepped foot in the state of Nebraska before. So this is a live, unedited view of the time I did. This is just a small dirt road in the middle of nowhere where the Kansas and Nebraska state lines meet. You can't really tell we're in a different state. There certainly isn't a welcome sign. You might be thinking, you're some major famous superstar YouTuber who knows more about America than any other person ever? How have you not been to Nebraska before? Well, why would I have? I had my preconceived notions about what I'd expect to see here. Small rural towns, corn, a big city every now and then. Probably the same things you think you'd see. It was day four of my adventure through America's heartland. The previous day, I had spent some time in smaller towns in Kansas, so it was mandatory to see how things compared one state north. I was planning to head directly to Omaha this morning, but while I was reading up on the state, I saw a comment from somebody, and it said, get off the main roads. So I did. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Nebraska. We're gonna look at a lot of the green as far as you can see. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Nebraska. We're gonna meet some people there that are just like you and me. Nebraska is a place that you might not know. After this, there's no doubt you might want to go. There's small towns in Nebraska, there's tiny towns in Nebraska, and Nebraska has towns so small there isn't even a word. Minuscule? But just about anywhere you are in this state, and you're in flyover country. Right now, we're in a place called Murray, Nebraska. There were exactly 458 people here the last time they counted. There's a good chance there's less than that by the time you watch this video. Ten years ago, this place had nearly 700 people. At this rate, by 2050, there will be nobody left to talk to. All the old people die away and the young people just go off to college and never come back. Here's what the town's minutes look like. It's such a small place, they vote on whether or not Doug can put a pole barn on his property. Almost everybody here is white. One out of 25 is Hispanic. Folks here are up there in age, but they aren't old, old. Most families here bring in just about the national average salary-wise, but it's cheap, so money goes a long way. It's just the most vanilla place you can imagine. I'm only 20 minutes from Omaha, so people can live here and drive into work. It's much cheaper here than it is in Omaha. Places like this are red. They're full of old white conservatives, farms, and churches. It's surrounded by corn and bean fields, for 20 miles in every direction. There's not much going on downtown here. There's a bank in town and a fire department and a small city hall. I bet there's one person inside. It's just chill here. This is the most expensive home in town, a place that's $340,000. That's almost the cost of the average U.S. home. And this is what the cheapest home in town looks like. This place sold for $51K a month ago. Soybeans and cattle were higher Friday. Corn finished lower and hogs closed mixed. I'm John Perkins with the Brownfield Market Update. Just about everywhere you turn in this state, they're talking about crops. Every Nebraska small town has a few farmers in town. Some of them are filthy rich, but you wouldn't know it by looking at the car they drive. There's some farmers who say they're barely making it, but they have a fortune socked away. Many of the big boys out here continue to gobble up the land and grow their operations. A lot of the smaller farms can't cut it anymore. They can't compete. There's labor shortages, supply chain issues, rising costs. Some face a water shortage. When it does rain, it's a welcome relief these days. Did you know Nebraska makes the second most ethanol of all states? Yeah, I'm happy. And these people are making the environment better. Ethanol's good for the planet. Who said conservatives didn't care about Mother Earth? They don't care about the planet. They just want to get paid. That's probably true. Now we're going to look at a small Nebraska town with a different story. This is Blair, Nebraska, home to almost 8,000 people. 
That makes it big for Nebraska standards. But Blair isn't slowly dying away. This place was losing people for a long time. There's been a little bit of a resurgence in the number of people realizing how much they wanted to experience small town Nebraska. So they've got people wanting to move here. And all the new people coming in is causing a little bit of drama. There's some new development coming into Blair now and folks around these parts don't like that very much. When you get a lot of new interest, it makes the cost of living go up too. Here in Blair, it's gone up a lot in the last few years. Homes that once sold for 150 k are now going for three or $400,000. What the hell? I don't know why locals would be upset by that. Their home prices are going up too. I mean, there's never going to be any traffic here. Maybe it's just the values folks are bringing into rural America. I bet it has something to do with that. This is the most expensive home in Blair, which fetched $639,000 a while back. Yes, that's right. That's a lot of money for middle of nowhere in Nebraska. This home's the cheapest one I could find. It sold for $59,000. So you could probably sell your home and come here and have a pretty nice life, couldn't you? Anyways, Blair's adding a car dealership and they're widening their roads. They even brought in a big fancy new Walmart to town and that was a big deal. Some say it's starting to kind of feel like an Omaha suburb now. Uh-oh. But you can't blame people for coming your way, Blairians. A lot of places in Nebraska are truly the last best hope for families and single parents just starting out. There's affordable housing, low crime rates, good schools. People have values. They're not assholes. Places like this are a bright light shining across an otherwise bleak landscape. Way out here in classic America. Many people tell you Nebraska has the kindest, honest, and most generous people they've ever met. In places like this, the mechanic will let you take his truck into town while yours is getting fixed. Oh, there's bad apples, but in Nebraska, they're just few and far between. And for entertainment out here, people hunt, but most of the land's private land. You can ride motorcycles all over. There's some lakes nearby. Kids burn down barns. Older folks collect things for fun. Postcards, figurines, tractors, engines. On a quiet night out here, you can hear the bluegill fart. Religion's a big deal. Church is a lifestyle. You'll hear people saying, see you at church all over town. You can bet a lot of these people wish they could share their birthday with baby Jesus. A lot of these smaller towns don't have a restaurant within a 30 minute drive. Sometimes for a change of pace, it's bad Mexican food that's so bad it tastes like Greek food. For the most part, though, they eat a lot of comfort food in Nebraska. Jello molds, taters, pork chops, meatloaf, mushrooms, deer. Nebraskans are hard workers. They're honest to a fault and straight shooters. People respect one another out here. This is salt of the earth type folk. And a few druggies mixed in. Small town Nebraskans give a lot in life, but they'll never be millionaires. They seem okay with that. This state's growing, but barely. They've added about 10,000 people a year here over the last decade. You could say a lot of these people are waiting to die, and you'd be right. Although, Nebraska is one of only a handful of states that has an inheritance tax, so you don't want to die here if you have a sizable estate. No way. The pace is so slow here, it might drive an outsider crazy. The sun comes up, cows moo, birds chirp, tractors rumble, the sun goes down. But it's a leave your bike out in the yard kind of place. And in a lot of these small towns, you pump your gas and then pay. When's the last time you saw that? Do you think in California, you could trust people to pay for their gas? No. And of course, they have a Casey's in Blair. Every small town in the Midwest has one. Now, if you've been following, the last time in a small town in Kansas, I tried the Casey's pizza there. So I had to know how Nebraskans make it. Mm. Better. Actually, this is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. This might be the best pizza I've ever had. I also had to try the Runza. For those who don't know, Runza is the place to get fast food here. They're only in Nebraska. 
Arunza is kind of a hot pocket stuffed with beef and cabbage and sauerkraut and onions. And wow, people, if they had this where I lived, I'd probably be fat because they are good, uh, 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 good. And not even get the one with cheese either. This is Plattsmouth, Nebraska. It too could be considered kind of an Omaha burb. It's about 20 minutes from downtown Omaha. If you wanted to live in Plattsmouth and commute into Omaha, it would cost you about 270 k for a home these days. I think there's something to living in a town like this, as long as you can make the work thing a thing. This was just some random place I thought I'd stop in. I was impressed. Of course, not all of Nebraska is this nice. A lot of small towns here are in disrepair. A lot of the downtowns are shuttered. But you won't see broken windows and graffiti and tents or poop on the ground here. They're not going to stand for that. Not Nebraska. This state's all about corn huskers football, tornadoes, corn, cows, peace, quiet, and fresh air. It's the heartland of America. You can stand out here in the middle of nowhere and you feel like you're the only person in the whole county. This is Little Obert, Nebraska, population 22, maybe 21 by now. Who's really counting? Clearly, everybody knows everybody in a town like this. I'm sure they all go to the same church. And they all go to the same school. And then there's Monowai, Nebraska. Population one. Yes, one person lives in town here. It's the least populated place in the country. All there is in Monowai is a couple of trailers, a fallen down building, a little cool library that somebody set up, and a restaurant. It's called the Monowai Tavern, and the woman who runs it is also the town's mayor. Clearly, she's the only person in town, and she runs a tavern in the middle of nowhere. Back in 1930, they had 130 people here. Then, for reasons you can guess, people started to move away. Today, this is all that's left. There's only 10,000 people in this whole county these days. It's like that around the country. One in three rural communities is losing people. But that might not be a forever trend, because many of us are sick of the bullshit that's happening in big cities. Anyways, this tavern's become world famous because Monowai's kind of a unicorn. There are a lot of places on the planet with one person in them. The woman who owns the tavern, her name's Elsie Eiler. Everybody wants to talk to her and take her picture and meet her. She's 89 years old, and she's been running this place by herself since 1971. She says when she's gone, the tavern's gone, and the tavern is the town. And then there's Little Valentine, Nebraska, population 2409. The only reason I wound up in Valentine is because the nearby casino on the Native American reservation was ghetto. Like, I couldn't stay there. It was bad. But I'm glad I didn't because I found Valentine. There's really not a lot here except a few things to cater to passers through, some restaurants and some bars. Seems like pretty much everything in town caters to the cattle wrestlers and the cowboys in town. Everywhere in Valentine, there's a ranch of some sort. I think a big part of Valentine's economy is related to shipping cattle in and out. They truck them in and they truck them out of this place at all hours. Of course, there's rules to cattle wrangling. Things that might seem odd to you and I are the day-to-day -day for these folks. Is she preg or not? Are they drug-free? Are they able to walk? <laughs> While in Valentine, I ate at a local favorite called the Pepper Mill. While in Nebraska, you gotta eat like a Nebraskan, so I went for the brisket, and that was a strong brisket. The thing looked like a damn steak. 
I kept myself entertained here by playing Sammy Kershaw and John Deere Green for 30 minutes straight. They loved it. Nebraska also has legalized gaming machines. I won a cool $25 by playing Bug Crazy at the bunkhouse. The bunkhouse is totally my kind of place. You need to go there. But then you step outside and you remember you're in Valentine again. The whole place smells like burned brisket and manure. And it sounds like diesel trucks and animals. It was here in Valentine, my last day in Nebraska, with the sun setting, that I realized I really like Nebraska a lot. This part of the country sure is something to behold in the summertime. Most people don't even know something like this exists to even dream about. Hello. Hi, is Elsie in? This is Elsie. Hi, Elsie. This is Nick Johnson. I have a YouTube channel. I met you when I was in town. Yeah. I was wondering, um, could I do a, a Zoom call with you and, and talk to you a little bit about what it's like to live in a small town in Nebraska? I'm I'm closed today. Oh, I know. I, I, I didn't need to, you didn't need to be open. I was just wondering if maybe we could do like a Zoom call. It, it didn't have to be at work. It could be at home and just chat with you for a little bit about what it's no, like. To... I don't think I'm interested. Thanks a lot. Are you sure? I think people would, she hung up. Well, you get what you get with Elsie Eiler. She's a busy woman, very spry. And if she says no, she means it. Elsie well, wouldn't talk to me. I get it. I was disappointed, but I understand. So right now we're going to talk to somebody else who knows a lot about small town Nebraska living. But no, we had a really good time. I really like Nebraska. And, you know, I just wanted to maybe talk to you for a little bit about just Nebraska life in yeah. general. Yeah, uh, sure. I guess the first question is, do people in Nebraska realize how good they have it? It's it's hard. I guess I was one of the people that did not realize how good I had it. <laughs> it cuz I can I come from Omaha. I mean, a little town outside Omaha, which is small. Um but Omaha is so big. I kind of just I felt like I was in the city, but I know a lot of people that do live um, like more West Nebraska. It is very small. And I, don't, I think you would get different answers from different people. Um, a lot of people love Nebraska. They'll never, never leave. Um, I think my generation just being younger, we all kind of try to get out of Nebraska, but it is very kid friendly. And I think maybe people that aren't trying to raise families do want to get out and maybe go to the city. Cause I know a lot of people do like to live in the city. So it's, it's kind of a, I would, I would say that you'd probably get either or answers. I, by the city, do you mean Omaha or just I any city? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know people will probably laugh because Omaha isn't like super, super big compared to some cities. But I guess for everybody in Nebraska, Omaha is pretty big. It does have a lot of stuff in there. So I think you get kind of all your needs that cities do have in Omaha. But yeah, it's, it's not going to be like los angeles or anything like that you don't want los angeles that, that, i think that's my point is i love omaha we, we thought omaha was great i'm actually going to say omaha's one of the best places i think i've been in a long time because it's at that point where it's not too big but it's big enough and it's exactly, clean yeah. and it's safe and it's comfortable there's enough to do I, to be, I mean nebraska is a bubble that i think you know you guys probably don't appreciate when you're in it, how great you have it when I've been to a lot of the country and I really like small town, Nebraska. It's safe. It's clean. Everyone's friendly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funky in a weird way. It's kind of, it, some of it feels Western. It feels definitely Midwestern. It's just a really peaceful place. It is. I, I agree. And I, my in-laws are in Glendale. So in the LA area and yeah. it does not feel very, I mean, Glendale's a very, it's a very nice place. It's very expensive. Um, so they are in a nicer place, but once you go into LA, it's just kind of scary. So, and where I'm at now is we're in a suburb of Baltimore and DC. So you'd think it would be safer in some places like Annapolis is pretty safe, but I mean, we're only safe cause we're on the base. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say that, yeah, 
a lot of people probably don't realize in Nebraska how good they have it because the, the schools are very good there, the public schools. I know a lot of people are struggling with public schools. Um, so it is very nice. Yeah, the kids, I'm sure, don't do bad things like they do in the inner city schools. I'm, I'm sure that there's not a lot of homelessness. You don't have a lot of crime. It's just yeah. the way America should be right in the middle there. Yeah, the the homeless. I mean, there's there's a couple here and there, but it's nothing like L.A. And even here has gotten really bad with the home. I mean, D.C. is really bad, but um, just the suburbs are starting to get more and more, I've noticed. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, probably a lot of people don't realize how good they have it. I know some people want to get out like me, <laughs> but I do miss it. So, yeah, I, in the wide open spaces, I, I had to keep stopping to just kind of take it in being from, I, I know I spent a lot of time in Indiana and I've seen, you know, wide open spaces before, but it's been a while and I, it's just so nice to just kind of look around and, and stop and kind of take it in. Do you guys start to resent the wide open spaces and start to go, Oh God, it's like <laughs> half hour to get to the nearest thing. Like I'm over it. Corn and barns. Yes. Oh yeah. That was one of my complaints was just like, people would ask what you do in Nebraska. And I had always joke, well, you could drive a few hours and see corn. You could drive a few more hours and see more corn. Um, Cause really you're landlocked. And that's kind of what I didn't like about it. Um, I mean, you can drive to like Colorado, but from where I am, I'm on the Eastern, like I'm right up against Iowa. So you're driving like eight hours there. Chicago's like eight hours. So there wasn't really a lot to, to, do I mean once you do Omaha you're you've kind of just done everything and so yeah a lot of a lot of people do complain about just seeing corn <laughs> so what is it like in in a small town in Nebraska what's it like um, to live there what do you like day to day what's the vibe yeah so when I was growing up there it um I think the vibe is still kind of the same there but when I was growing up you know I rode my bike everywhere it was like there was nothing, I was never scared that anything was ever going to happen to me. Um, usually when people get together, we would meet at the ball fields and just talk. Cause there's not a lot to do in Blair where I'm from, but it was just a lot of outdoor stuff. We'd hang around people's houses. Usually kids would, you know, be bouncing back and forth from house to house. Uh, and you know, once we got our driver's license, we'd go into Omaha, um, there are some parts of Omaha that aren't safe. Like North Omaha is kind of what we call the bad area. So, um, but yeah, just growing up in Blair, it was nice. I, I liked the quiet. And then once I got, you know, teenage years, I kind of dreaded it because it, it was kind of boring after a while. But, but now that I have kids of my own, I wish that I had that back. Yeah. They say Nebraska is behind the times. I think that's a good thing. It, it feels very old Americana out there, how things used to be oh, yeah. in the old everybody days. Knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, so does that, is that a negative thing? I, I'd imagine there might be some small town drama when everybody knows everybody's business. And yes and no. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Like as kids, because, you know, if I say I want to go to so-and-so's house more than likely we knew who they were. My parents knew who they were. Grandparents knew who they were. Um, I know as I've gotten older, I know the adults, I mean, they like it, but yeah, everybody's in your business. So nothing really can get past anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, if you do something in town, everyone's going to know about it the next day. Ex yeah. I'm yeah. Sure. Whenever there was like some scandal that would break out, everybody would know about it. So but yeah, usually like fights or something, if kids got in fights, that was mostly what you would hear about or, or somebody was like getting a divorce or something like that. <laughs> Pretty mm -hmm. small town stuff. Yeah, we drove through Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska. It, it almost, each one, each state has its own vibe. And you would think that visually, you know, oh, all these places look the same but they don't feel the same. It's weird how you, you different states have kind of a different vibe. Do you have a way to describe how Nebraska might be different than other states? Um, 
how do you guys feel? How do p- people in Nebraska feel about what's going on in the rest of the country? Do you just look at the rest of the country or large parts of it and think that is a world apart from what we have grown up knowing where we are? Like what exactly? Like just the everybody like moving or COVID? Um, this, just the, the things that you hear about in big cities, you know, the crime, the cost of living, traffic, the BS, the, the rioting, the homelessness, the rundown areas, the depression. I, I could go on and on about what it's like in a lot of states and in a lot yeah. of big cities that you don't have any of that stuff in Nebraska. D- do people there talk about it? Do they think, God, I'm, I'm glad we're in this bubble. I, I'm, I'm glad we live here. I can't, I can't understand how the rest of the country lives like that. Cause that's what I would think that you would think, but I don't know how, how the mentality is. There. So when you say bubble, I think that's a really good word for it because I feel like when I do talk to family members, um, they have no idea. <laughs> like I was talking to my mom a couple of weeks ago, telling her about stuff going on and she was just very surprised that that was even happening. So I think people do kind of live in a bubble. And I mean, I don't know if it's because I've gotten older or just moving out of Nebraska, um, but I have, you know, politics and stuff have started to get to me. And I think, I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if it's because of my, I'm getting older, so I'm getting more into it or if it's just because I've left Nebraska. But I mean, where I'm at, we hear about this stuff all the time. So I think people are in a bubble and they just don't even really know. Like you go into Blair and I remember visiting, I was in uh, Bellevue, which is kind of outside of Omaha, but I remember visiting uh, Blair during COVID and like you go in and to places where, you know, this was the time where masks were supposed to be worn and building stuff, farmers and stuff. We just, Blair just didn't ever wear masks or anything. I think mean, there was like a couple of people that would. Um, so I don't know. I think it might've been just maybe not out of ignorance, but just they just weren't going to do it. <laughs> so I think that is a lot of the mentality or they just, yeah, live in a bubble and they don't really know because that's kind of what I've ran into. People just don't really seem to know. Um, and that might've just, that might just be the older generation too. I know maybe the newer generation is kind of waking up to some stuff going on around them. So. I say stay in your bubble. I, <laughs> I honestly, I, we, I, we, I, again, I understand. I kind of wish I did stay in my bubble. (laughs) That is something that I would say people uh, don't realize is that Nebraska, there's not a lot going on, but that's usually a good thing. So. It is. (laughs) Yes. I've realized that the hard way. So. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, We should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.